So we're here to talk about um, local resources to help you stay independent as you age. And um, why is it that Dawn invited me to talk about that, in addition to the kind words she said about the fact that we're friends and, um, and she knows that I um, respect people of all ages. Uh, it's because um, I'm a curious person about um, how to make things work for people. So I own a, um, a care management company called Care Is There. Um, our job is to help people stay independent in their homes. We also help people choose assisted living when they choose to go there or when they don't choose to go there and have to go there. We help people um, do whatever they need to do to move into assisted living and once they get there we help them get integrated, find their place there and also take them out and do all the things that uh, isn't as easy to do once you're in assisted living. So in that, um, in that work I'm always interested in how we can help people have the kind of life that they love. So I'm in, out in the community connecting with resources that I think can help our clients. Um, one of the ways I do that is I'm the chairwoman of the Aging in Place Business Roundtable from the Charlottesville Regional Chamber of Commerce. I used to be able to say that. I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it. Um, and what we um, do there is there's a whole bunch of service providers. We have between, let's say, 45 and 70 people come to that meeting every month to um, to meet each other and know what each other does so that if we have a client who, um, who has a need that isn't exactly our specialty, that we can connect them with somebody else. And so in that work, I get to meet a whole bunch of different people that provide senior services. Um, in my business, um, I don't sell information. I basically, people buy for me time if they want me to do something for them. If they want me or my people, my company, to do something for them, solve a problem, get something done, then they hire us. But I don't sell information. I I um, give away anything that I know for free. So one of the um, in, in my work, I, I learn things, I meet people, and um, if you want access to that, one of the reasons, ways is to come here just like you, you're doing now. If you um, ever wonder, oh, I wonder if there's somebody that does blah, 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 you're always um, welcome to call me. My cards are up on the table. Um, and uh, we give free consultations to anybody who think they might um, use our services. So, um, you know, whenever you have a need for information, you're um, welcome to call me, and I'm here today just to share with you the things that I've learned um, along the way. Um, like I said, um, one of my privileges in this work is to meet people that, um, that solve problems for seniors. And I, when I was doing this presentation, I thought, wouldn't it be so much fun for this if not just these guys had to hear me like, yeah, you know, jabber on about it, but they got to see some of the stuff and meet some of the people that I know that provide some of these services. So that's why I, I um, brought my friends over here to be here so you could meet them and talk to them and see what they've got to offer. So this is Scott Harris with Roberts Home Medical. And who's, um, who has been to the Roberts Home Medical showroom? Okay, so only a few people. So great because you can go over there and you can see everything and you can try stuff out and there's definitely gonna be something that you've never heard of that you didn't realize was available that could probably make your life easier. So you can go over there. Scott and his folks will show you around, show you how, how everything works. Where is over there? Yes, tell us. Uh, I got maps, but we're real close to here. If you go straight across 29 off the Greenbrier, cross through the light, past the Mexican restaurant, and then 7-Eleven, there's a sign that says Seminole Place. Turn right there, and we're in the old Condal building. They made it into different businesses. If you go in that road, we're right to the left. You can't miss it. One of the things that they do at Roberts Home Medical that you might not normally think of is they do a lot of service over there. For example, um, Scott was uh, reminding me that if you, let's say you have your hip replaced, you get a walker, you've recovered, you don't need the walker anymore, you give the walker away. Well, Medicare will pay for one of those every five years, but let's say you go and have the other hip done two years from now. Now you're going to have to pay for your own walker. Am I like right about that? So if you're getting durable medical equipment at um, Roberts, they'll help you understand what's going to be paid for in addition to just, you know, selling you something. So, you know, one of the things you may not expect from our local service providers. This is Bill Murphy from Rivanna Hearing Aid Center. Um, Bill obviously provides hearing aids and also does um, um, other devices that help you if uh, you're having trouble hearing, like they have a super cool phone that will, um, when somebody calls you, in addition to there being voice, just like you're expecting with a phone, um, they, it also transmits the, um, it takes the voice, the person calling you, turns it into text, and displays text on the screen. 
So if it's easier for you to, to see than hear, then you can read that text coming out of the screen. And that's just you know, an example of the kinds of things that are being done now. Um, so, and, and talking about um, my newsletter, the newsletter that I sent out yesterday, um, in that is a video of me over at Bill Murphy's place, where I've had a hearing aid center. Um, I had my first hearing aid te hearing test done. I had never had one done before. I was kind of curious about my hearing, and I also wanted to know what the experience was like for my clients when they had their hearing tested. So. I went and um, Bill tested it for me. We did a video of it, and in my newsletter, and soon on my website, will be that video. So if you've never had your hearing tested and sort of it seems like an unfamiliar thing for you to do, then you can watch me do it. And you can see that it's really kind of fun and awesome. And we had a good time, right, Bill? So you, so, so you can take a look at that. Um, also, over at Ryan Vanna Hearing Aid Center, um, Bill gives free hearing tests like he did for me, and he um, will repair hearing aids. If there's a hearing aid that you have, even if you didn't buy it from him, uh, that he can repair in his office, he will do that for you. For free, I think. So this, you know, I like these guys to come because I know about all this great stuff that they, they do that you may not, you know, have a reason to know. This is Suzanne Birch with Vision Solutions, and she provides um, magnifiers, sunglasses, um, check writing devices, all sorts of things if you're having trouble seeing. I have a client who has macular degeneration and um, Suzanne came over to show her you know, what the options were. She found something that really worked for her. One of the things Suzanne does that's kind of special is she knows that if you have trouble um, seeing, you might have trouble driving. So she will come to your place for free to show you all the stuff so you can pick it out in your own environment. So I'm, I brought these guys today because I wanted you to have the pleasure, like I have, of knowing them as people and having a chance to talk to them about what's, um, yes, what else is available, you know, that you might not normally know. And um, I'm, uh, a couple other things. You have in front of you a handout um, of all kinds of names and numbers of people that um, I know in the community that provide services. I have worked on client assignments with some of them. I know all of them. That is not an exhaustive list of what's available in the community. There are exhaustive lists, and uh, later in the presentation, as a matter of fact, I think it's on your list. If you go to, if you're a computer person and you go to um, agingyourway.org, um, Cynthia Hash has made a website that basically has everybody in town listed in there. So if you want to know everybody, you can go to Cynthia's um, website. Um, the phone book is a good source. The, what I, who I have on this list are some people that I know and, um, and I feel like we do a good job for you. Like I said, I haven't tested out everybody, but, but these are people that I know. And I wanted you to be able to walk away with some um, names and numbers of people that you could try. And Don just handed me something I like a lot. Um, those of you who come to Senior Center may have seen Todd Hawkins from Builderfish come and talk about um, ways to make your house more accessible and to work with you better. Um, he has put together what he's calling a lifetime home survey really comprehensive guide that says if you look at your home, um, how should it be configured to make it um, um, convenient for you? And right down to the measurements. And what he um, gave for me to give you guys today, and they're, they're, they're over there on the um, table if you want to get them, is his kind of um, mini version of that. He's got a, a maxi version that's um, really exhaustive that you can also find on his website, which I, I'm sure he has the, um, the link on here. And if he doesn't, I can get that for you. So um, just as kind of an introduction, I wanted you to know that I'm here because I'm curious about solutions for people, and I wanted you to um, have access to that and also you know, meet some of the folks that are doing that. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, let's see. Um, this presentation is we t called more resources for staying independent as you age, right? Some of you, who was here when I did this last time? Resources for staying independent. Yeah, okay, so maybe like 20% of you or something. I see you. I've seen you guys before. Um, so this is, um, I consider that kind of part one. What we did there is we said, what do you have to do to avoid the things that have you lose your independence? Um, how do you avoid having a catastrophic fall? How do you um, learn to uh, use ways to manage your medication so you don't end up in a fix where you have to you know, be cared for elsewhere? So that was you know, kind of how do you keep it? This is going to be about how do you make it great? How do you extend your experience, you know, your, um, your independence through things that are available in the community? 
And then we're going to do another presentation, myself and Holly Hilton, in April. Um, that's, uh, the part that I'm going to be talking about is how to advocate for yourself within the system, especially the healthcare system, or how to advocate for somebody else. So what I'm going to talk about is just a little reflection on you know, what is independence, because sometimes we, um, we get stuck on a couple things I want to talk about. Um, what's required to be independence, and um, then we're going to talk about um, resources that can empower you to do that. Okay, so what is independence? I, I like this thing where you look it up in the dictionary. It says thinking or acting for oneself. And I translate that into meaning it's making your own choices. It doesn't have to mean living alone. It doesn't have to be living where or how you used to live. And it doesn't have to mean doing everything yourself. And sometimes when I, um, I talk to folks, they're very um, attached to, um, I want to do it this way. Um, this is the way I've always done it. Um, and I don't need any help. And that, um, it worries me a little bit because I know sometimes those folks are pushing things away that could actually have their life be richer. And when I'm um, with people like that, that's, that's a valid choice, and we let people make that choice. But I like to um, emphasize that what we really want in our lives is the choice to live the way we want to live. And it doesn't have to mean the way it always was. So we're going to be talking about a few things that are di maybe different than we're used to, but might make things better. So what, what challenges are independence? What, what starts happening when um, people start, for example, worrying? Um, we are, you know, I, was, I heard it again today, you know, my, my son is worried, you know, he thinks I should move into assisted living because he's afraid I'm going to fall because I've got stairs in my house. What are the things that, that sort of get, start getting into that category where either you're worrying or the people that love you are worrying? Um, often it's a physical thing. Let's say you, um, you can't see or hear the way that you used to hear and see. Um, maybe you can't get around the way you used to get around. Or maybe you know, you're starting to have fuzziness in the memory department. So it could be something physical. It also can be something like you know, a, the loss of a life partner. We're talking about this a little bit before too. That if you have somebody in your life who's always handled certain things and they're suddenly gone, then you're a little bit stuck. Um, and it, sometimes, you know, it, there are traditional roles that say, you know, your, the wife has always made the, you know, kept the house and made the meals. You know, I've met men that don't know how to turn on the stove. And let's say that the man is always taking care of the finances. There are, um, you know, women who don't know how to write a check. So sometimes not, you know, not having um, learned the skills that we need to be independent in the world can kind of get in the way. So, what kind of happens when some of these things start to be compromised? Well, it wouldn't really make a difference except for the things you have to do to get through life start to um, slip. And this is where the people in your life, they come to visit and they go, oh, starting to worry about mom. You know, we're going to have to do something about that. It's because of these things, what they call in the um, care industry the instrumental activities of daily living. You've probably heard about the activities of daily living, like dressing, bathing, and that sort of thing. And the instrumental activities are things that just get us through our day. And these are the things that start to kind of slip the earliest. And this is where there are things in the community that can help you extend yourself so that you're not having these problems. So um, finding and utilizing resources, looking up phone numbers, using the telephone, making or keeping a doctor's appointments. If you're having trouble hearing, it's hard to, to make appointments because you're trying to call and you can't hear what they're having to say. And so then you start missing them and then you know, things start kind of going downhill from there. Um, driving or arranging travel, man, that's a big one. Who in here can't drive or doesn't drive anymore? Just one. Okay, two. So you're taking the bus. And, sir, how are you um, getting around? So you've, you've got, what's that? Both. Both. Okay, so you've, um, you've got, um, and this is your partner, yes? Okay, she's, so she's driving you. And when you point up, are you pointed toward God or? Okay, all right, so you're utilizing other resources as well. Okay, so then you're, you know, you're able to still do what you, um, you want to do because you're, you're utilizing something else. And the, the woman who I met in the back, like she said, oh, I'm here really early because I'm riding the bus, so she's not really on her own schedule, but at least she's out doing the things that she wants to do. Um, preparing meals, um, eating TV dinners for the rest of your life because you don't want to you know, make a meal for only one, I don't know. That's all right, but no way to live as far as I'm concerned. Shopping, housework, you guys know these. These are the kinds of things that 
If you can't do them, they start to impinge upon your life, and it's pretty easy to find somebody who can help you do them. So what does independence require? This is the, the head game. Like This is a psychology, and this is what I see sometimes in my business that hold people back from things that they could really do for themselves. <clears throat> Acknowledgement that things have changed. <laughs> because if nothing's changed, then we don't have a problem. We're doing as well as we've always you know, done. If people start saying things to us or, we, or things start happening in our, in our lives, it's easy to just pretend it isn't happening. The problem with that is that it starts to sneak up on you, if something happens, and then things are out of your control. Um, so acknowledgement something's going on. I'm a curious person. Being curious about what's available brings things into your life. I don't have to say to you guys because that's why you're here. If you weren't curious, you wouldn't be here. Willingness to do something different. That's kind of the next step. That's the one that says, okay, I get that. I see that. Um, then being willing to try it is the next step to really bring in something forward. And um, the willingness to um, accept assistance, that is big, 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 big. Because really, nobody wants help, nobody. I don't, I want to be able to do everything myself. Almost everybody I know wants to be able to do everything themselves. The, and we wouldn't be having this conversation if we were able to do everything ourselves that we really wanted to do. So the willingness to accept the assistance of others, there's also, giant magic in accepting assistance because guess what? People want to give. People want to be appreciated and you give them the gift of that when you let them do something for you. You probably know it in, in yourself. Let's say you see somebody struggling and you think, I, I could just, you know, I could do that, you know, I could open that door, I could get that, you know, cup of coffee and they say, no, no, no. Ah. Being able to do that for them, you get something from that. It's nice to know you have a contribution to make. So in the moments when you know, there's something somebody can do for you, I say, graciously accept it. My father taught me that. Somebody offers you a Coke, somebody offers you, you take it. Because it's a compliment to them to accept what they have to give you. So I'm a believer that um, ex graciously accept people's assistance. And you not only help yourself, you help them maybe even more than you're helping yourself. And being proactive about, hey, saying, this is my life. Because we will stomp our feet and say, don't you send me the nursing home. Don't you tell me what to do. So that same you know, insistence, we can say, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find out what's, um, what my choices are, and I'm going to make that choice. But if we just say no and don't somehow say yes, then all we get is the situation where somebody's going to try and drag us. And who wants that? So in my mind, that, these are the things that independence requires. And just like one more um, point on that. This is just kind of a scale that I came up with on my own, like um, where things go. Denial. That's, um, I can drive just fine. I've been driving all my life. I taught you to drive, son. You think I can't drive? <laughs> Even though there's been accidents or whatever the situation is. That's just denying there's a problem. Stubbornness, resentment. Here's one of resentment. Here, here's an example from me. Uh, before I started wearing my glasses all the time. Uh, these cell phones, they're made by young people. Why did they make the numbers so small? I can't see this. Well, now that, you know, I don't have that complaint now that I'm wearing my glasses. <laughs> so just, you know, being, blaming somebody and being resentful doesn't really get you anywhere if you're not wearing your glasses. Um, so then I talked about acceptance, curiosity, proactivity. I wanted to make a point about this one that I put last on the, the list, desperation. This is when maybe you waited too long. I was listening to an attorney at the Aging in Place Business Roundtable. I think it was Doris Gelbin who said that um, she sees people um, that get to where they are so desperate to have somebody care for them that they start giving them things. I will, um, I will give you my house if you will take care of me for the rest of my life. And we don't, we don't want to be put in that kind of position of vulnerability where we're um, so desperate that we do things that may not be in our best interest. So if we get you know, on it earlier and we have ourselves a system and we got people around us that want to help us, then we don't have to be in the situation to say, please, 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 please do this or don't do this. So I, you know, I'm a big fan of take matters into your own hands before you, you get in that situation. So that, all that said, um, I, now I want to kind of make you guys aware of some things 
um, generally that I'm aware of that you might want to look into that, that could work for you. Here I'm talking about, um, there's a couple ways, what I call extend yourself, right? Or I might say, I say to our clients sometimes, they're complaining, oh, I wish, you know, you didn't have to read that for me. And I say, you're just outsourcing your site to somebody who, you know, can still see well. Um, well, you're, you're outsourcing your memory. You don't have to, you know, worry about remembering your calendar all the time because um, we're taking care of that for you. So it's just a way of kind of making yourself bigger than you are by looking at other things and making those things a part of you. So devices, for example, you know, I um, can't see you very well now. I'm um, 48 years old. It hasn't been that long that I've needed these, but I need them. And um, now I don't think twice about wearing my glasses. I, I don't want to be without my glasses. I need my glasses. I like my glasses because I can do what I want to do. Um, but sometimes, you know, glasses okay. Maybe it's earlier in life we get glasses. Hearing aids, mm, sometimes people are reluctant to look at hearing aids. Oh, people are going to think I'm old. Um, walkers, um, oh, you know, I don't want to be seen with walker. Um, I had a client, maybe I told you a little bit about her last time. Um, she ha um, wouldn't leave her house because she was afraid she was going to fall, so she didn't get to see her friends. She wouldn't wear her emergency um, services device, that you know, they push the button if you fall, because she didn't want her friends to see her wearing that thing. So she was a little bit stuck. And by the way, her friends were all worried she was going to fall. So, you know, we can kind of get stuck in these, um, these things where we don't want the device, where the device could really, want to, uh, could really give us a life that we want to have. So, um, you know, um, these kinds of things can really make a difference for you. Um, Suzanne, you know, she's back there with her magnifiers and stuff. She'll show you that stuff. Um, Bill will talk to you about the phones, the hearing aids. Um, uh, personal alert systems, I just sort of said something about. But one, something you should know is um, here in town, my home for life. Do you guys, who knows my home for life? I had a feeling, one, right? It is a service run by Java. I, their office is still over there at uh, Branchlands, yes? Upstairs? Okay. Okay, see, this is why you have me here. She lives at Branchlands, and I know the guy, right? Mark Henson is his name. His um, number's in there. They do two things over there. They sell um, devices, and they sell, well, they sell devices. Um, let me finish that, and I'll tell you the other thing they do. One of the devices they sell is an uh, emergency response system, personal emergency response system, where you push the button. Um, there are zillions of different kinds of these. The, one of the nice things about the one that they sell over there is it's not a subscription-based thing. You don't pay per month for it. You pay for the device. I can't remember how much it is. I want to say it's under $150. Um, you program it, and then you're good to go. It hooks into your phone system. It kind of acts like a phone. If you press the thing, it makes a phone call for you. And when you press it, the, you can talk back to the people on the thingy. So it's just kind of like a phone that follows you around, and, and you can just press a button to make phone calls. They will set it up for you for free. They'll come out there and do that. So it's reasonably priced. There's not a subscription, um, and they'll do it for you. So that's, that's a nice thing for them to do. <clears throat> the other thing My Home for Life does is they have a subscription-based service. You can pay them X dollars a month. I don't remember how much it is. And it, they will then um, give you access to um, service providers. I need a plumber. I need, um, you know, somebody to fix my car. And they have a list of people that they've approved that they will um, give you. And I do believe they, they, and it's been a while, but I think they will set it up for you, set up the appointment, they'll check back with you, that sort of thing. So if you want somebody to do stuff around the house, for example, or all different kind of service providers, you can sign up for their service and they'll do that for you. He's on the list, Mark Henschen. I'm just going to take a little sip of water here. This is how you know you're talking too much. Let's also do a little time check. Okay. One moment, please. I'm just going to sip. Ah. I almost poured that down my front. That would have been interesting. Okay, back to it. Um, let's see. Now, um, walkers and scooters and all things um, moving around and more. <laughs> Um, if you talk to Scott Harris over at Roberts Home Medical, like I said, they'll, he'll take you into their showroom, he'll show you the different ones, um, and then you can you know, pick it out and see 
how it works. Because they're <clears throat> the ones with the big wheels are different than the ones with the little wheels, and there's all kind of different options. <clears throat> and again, I don't want to be seen with that thing. Man, oh man, you, you want to be able to like move around. I was with a client of mine. We were at a restaurant, and two different people <coughs> commented and complimented her that her coat, her royal blue coat, perfectly matched her walker. <laughs> And it was like she was, you know, wearing jewelry. <laughs> so, you know, just think of your walker's jewelry. <laughs> yes? Uh, one thing we tell patients a lot, because we, we run into the pride issue and want to use the product that's there to help them, is to teach those broken hips. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that they'll go out and not use their walker that's prescribed for them, but then they'll break their hip and they're just so much worse off than they were before. So, there's nothing wrong with Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but you know, all you young folks can make these. Um, but yeah. the problem is, and you know, I, I can give you a couple of stories of my own and other people's. Um, I have a friend, for example, who is in his late 80s and he hates wearing his glasses even now. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I met the most wonderful man at University Village yesterday, and he, he was sitting there in his scooter. He was just like full of grins and full of life, and he said, um, you know, I don't ask people how they are anymore. I just ask them what hurts. <laughs> and he says, and I tell him, if it doesn't hurt, it probably isn't working. <laughs> so, you know, I guess it's just all the attitude that we have about, you know, what's falling apart. The, on the racquetball court, I was thinking, because I was on the racquetball court earlier this morning, and I was thinking, you know, nobody asked me how my game is anymore. They asked me how my knees are. <laughs> so we're all, you know, we're all headed in the same direction. <laughs> Um, so just a few more on these, and, and you know, some of these you guys may know about, but it's, um, it's good to think about. Medication organizers and reminders. Um, you know, I can't keep track of all those pills, and um, the, the, what is it about the um, teeny tiny writing, even with these, on the, um, the bottles? And I can hardly decipher it. And now some of the ones have the, the ones that you peel off the label and you get to read all that that's inside. You've got to be kidding me. So um, putting pills in pill organizers, you know, for me is a good idea. Uh, um, I was just, as, as I was saying that, I was thinking about what you were saying, Don, about like you people at your age. Um, I was, in my heart, I was like, yes, because this is only we know us. Like I don't, you know, I don't know what's right for you. And I make my first mistake when I think I do. So we all have to look at what's available and say, this is right for me, this is wrong for me. You have to, you know, try to be open-minded and, 
you know, bring things toward us, but ultimately it needs to be our own choice about what's good. I like um, pill boxes for myself, so if you, if you just by habit used to having them all lined up and trying to remember what the dosage is, um, I think pill boxes can be wonderful. Telehealth, you know, the first time I really learned about telehealth was at the senior center, and I think it would be um, the computer user groups you guys had that telehealth people in. This is where they have little machines in your home that will monitor um, whatever your condition is. So like um, you can, let's say you have a condition that you have to very carefully monitor your blood pressure so you can have your medication right. They have machines that you like do your own thing and it um, transmits the information to the doctor or the doctor's office and they can read it and, and make sure that nothing's awry. And if something is awry, then <coughs> you can contact them, they will contact you and, and they can, um, uh, take measures from there, so that you don't have to always come into the doctor's office for everything. Can I Perfect have timing. I'm hoping they can put that, um, wire me up to that on the racquetball court so I can figure out like what's wrong with my swing. Something's <laughs> really wrong with my swing. So we're, maybe we can work on that. Um, the First Street catalog has lots of um, cool things in it that you can look, you know, I, <laughs> I, um, as you can tell, I'm kind of interested in the gadgets lately. So um, you can look in there and see if there's cool gadgets that, that work for your life. They kind of special with things for seniors. It, um, the First Street catalog, it is kind of, it is a gadget catalog for, I want to say, seniors. It has all sorts of um, things like uh, pill boxes that when it's time to take your meds, they, it talks to you and tells you it's time to take your meds. Um, any kind of, yes, did you have something on that? How do you access the catalog? How do you access the catalog? There, it's online, but there's also, um, uh, they do a, um, <laughs> what is it again? Oh yes, a printed one. <laughs> so they do a printed one. And I, you know, so, and I, I don't know how to do anything anymore except for Google. So uh, if I, I said to you, Google First Street, you know, catalog.com and you'll find it. Um, maybe, what do you do if you can't Google, Google something now? Does anybody get it? The catalog? It would be nice to get one here at the Senior Center. Like if the Senior Center can get a subscription or something. Yep, if you're computer people, then everything's... Ex I don't know because I don't know that one. So this is one of the... I forgot to tell you the other reason that I do these presentations is because I always learn something from you guys. So that's the catalog for independent living. Okay, what does that have in it? Okay. All right, so good tip, catalog for independent living. So that'll be on my list next time. So that's just some ideas about devices that will makes, kind of make you bigger and better than you are, sort of like the bionic man or woman. Um, who, who is the, um, the $6 million man, Jay, who was, what was his name? The, did the, the actor who did the $6 million man. I saw a, him doing an ad for a hearing aid. Right? Doesn't, who, do you remember his name? Yeah. Lee, Majors. Lee Majors. So he's doing hearing aids ads now, right? See? <laughs> okay, so services. Um, so we, the, we were talking about these activities of daily, instrumental activities of daily living that can get compromised when something starts going on with you. Um, who rides jaunt? Okay, yes. And what do you think? We talked about that, right? What do you think of jaunt? <laughs> and 
Okay, so she's um, she's small price and great service. okay. Small price, great service. What about you, sir? Very good, Benny County. You pick me up, and if you had a doctor appointment, you can you can tell them pick me up in an hour, and they'll come back and get you. So you have to what you call um, a, um, a like 24 hours in advance. Um, I think that you can ride John for a dollar fifty a ride if you are not able, like physically able, to ride the on the bus system, the city bus system. Okay, dollar quarter. So you want to check your facts. Dollar and a quarter. Um, so um, and my, uh, yes. Okay, very good. And my, the report that I've heard from folks, um, and I'm, I'm always asking because you know I need to know what works for people. Um, the drivers are very, they're knowledgeable, they're considerate. A client of mine, um, before she came, became my client, part of the reason she became my client, is she fell, and the only way anybody knew is that John came and, and she didn't come to the door. So that's the way that they figured out she, she was in trouble. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so you said that there's a um, reduced, they said that they won't take tips because it's against their policy, and that there's a reduced fee if you have kind of a chronic illness. Yes, and there's also different prices for all the mall counties and California. Yes. Higher than the county where I live. Yeah, okay. So, really, really great um, resource. Yes, sir. Like a wheelchair lift. Mm hmm. Yeah, so there's no reason to be like stuck at home when we got John, because not everybody's got John like we have John. Um, let's see, if finance stuff, we're talking about you know people who they've never had the role of, of keeping the finances. There are folks that will um, will take care of that for you. I was just talking to a financial advisor um, yesterday, Ruth Parsons. I don't know if you know her. Who she's a widow, and she said, you know, nobody knows what being a widow is like except for a widow, and um, she she has a particular passion for um, women who just haven't really known how to do this in their life and uh, are a little bit stuck, helping them um, become empowered themselves to make their own decisions kind of, and, and helping to guide them. So there are people, good people that will do that for you. We um, at um, CARES there, we uh, a lot of times help people manage their mail and manage their documents, um, pay their bills, that sort of thing. So there's people that'll do that. Um, housekeepers and handymen is a big one because um, standing on ladders um, makes me nervous. I, my sister, she's not a senior, but I called her one time. She answered her cell phone as she always does. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, there's a big storm coming. I'm on a ladder sawing a branch off the, um, off the you know, t near the top of the house. On the cell phone with the ladder, my, um, my father dropped a wheelbarrow on his head, but it was on the roof, and my uncle fell off a ladder with a chainsaw. <laughs> He, he, he was okay, but um, so there are people that will do these things for you, so that's handy. Um, I, let me say, and, and anybody who knows afterwards, right at this very moment, I don't have a housekeeper I'm recommending. So if anybody has a housekeeper that they really feel good about, please come talk to me, because for um, services that are common to people's home in an intimate way like that, I like to know folks. Um, we do, you know, background checks on folks like that before we recommend them. But, but if you know somebody, let me know, because having a housekeeper is really great, and um, you want to have one you can trust. Um, for errands, meals, driving, and that kind of light stuff, there are companion services that will do that for you. They're on the list. Um, one of the things that I've started to do with a couple partners is um, there are um, companion agencies that you, you hire the agency, and it's great because if the person who you normally have isn't, um, doesn't come, they will send somebody else. They do a lot of training and all that kind of thing. Some people don't want that because they, whatever reason. One is because you pay the agency a charge for that. Um, some people want to hire somebody just on their own. So I partnered with a couple of people, um, Dana Fry and um, Carrie Miller. We started a business called Quality Caregiver Placement. And what we're doing is have a, a pool of caregivers that we know. And when an, um, a person comes to us and says, I want to hire somebody just me, then we will look in our database and see who we think might match. We will, um, if we find a match, we'll go out and do a background check on them, do a, um, have them have a, um, a 
TV test and a drug test, and we call their references. And then we'll come back and say, okay, we have a candidate that we think you might be interested in, um, and so if you'd like to you know, see this con um, candidate, then you'd like pay us this money. So you pay an upfront charge to meet the person, and then you hire them, and then from then on, it's the two of you. You negotiate your own prices, your own schedule. Um, what companion agencies are going to have a minimum. You, may, you could say, I don't want a minimum. Are you willing to just come over you know, once a day for an hour? Yeah, or no, or whatever it is. Um, the, one of the disadvantages of doing that is you're then responsible for things like payroll taxes and for understanding the insurance implications of having somebody in your house. Um, what we've done with that is gotten um, insurance people and tax people to partner with us. And we say to you, know, you as an employer, OK, you want to go see you know, Hanson Weevil, and you want to go see these insurance guys, and they will counsel you about what you should do about that. So you can, um, for these things, it's really, really great to have, to have a companion just to do these little things for you. And you can either hire an agency to do it, or you can hire somebody yourself. That is um, slightly different than um, home health agencies who actually do skilled nursing. And if you need um, skilled nursing or if you need um, physical therapy, then these guys will come out to your house. Um, under certain circumstances, um, Medicare is going to pay for skilled services, but it is only under certain circumstances, and it is only for a short period of time. Um, companion agencies, um, Medicare is not going to pay for. As a matter of fact, I would say almost nothing I'm going to talk to you about today is paid for by Medicare. Almost nothing. And we're going to also talk about some um, options if you, know, you don't want to spend money on this stuff. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, educational services, I'm big on this because I think we need to keep our, you know, ourselves moving mentally. This is why I play racquetball on my, um, I'm a right-handed person playing left-handed racquetball on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> partly, partly because my <clears throat> lefty partner was injured and he wanted me to play on my other side. But then I said, hey, I think this is a way, you know, we can keep our brains going. You know how they say, learn a new language, learn to play a musical instrument. So I started playing racquetball on my left side, um, and we decided to keep the score in Italian just to keep the, you know, the trend going of keeping the brain working. We learned the numbers too well, so now we've moved on to Croatian. So that's, um, if you're at ACAC Tuesday, Thursday morning, you'll see me speaking Croatian and playing bad racquetball on my left side. So that you can do that, or you can come to the senior center programs, or you can go to um, OLE, or even, I put down here about educational services. Did you know that Martha Jefferson Hospital gives a course in having a hip replacement? So if you know you're going in for a hip replacement or some sort of joint replacement, you can go over there and take a class, and they'll teach you how it's going to go. Awesome. I need to get triad on Seville seniors. One of the things that I do... Yes. Um, I created Seville Seniors for the computer people in the room um, as an online social network, kind of like Facebook in a way, for senior service providers, caregivers, and care receivers. So that it's called, it's www.sevilleseniors.org. And I created it so that um, people could put up little profiles, like businesses could put up little profiles. And then we do things like little blog posts and event posting. So you can go on there and see uh, you know, events that are going on. You can see people talking about new things that they're doing. And I, I did it that way because I wanted it to be kind of personal, so you could see the personal side of these folks. And so people would have a lot of freedom to just you know, make these, these posts themselves. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, there's 160 or something um, organizations up there, people in organizations. So having triad on there would be, um, would be a good addition. I'll have to talk to them. And on this, um, this list, um, my company, Cares Air, we're care coordinators. We act as personal assistants for folks. So you know, whatever it is that they need, our job is to, um, our job really is to understand, listen to them, understand what they want, figure out how to make that happen for them. It may be us personally doing it for them. It may be bringing in you know, expert. Um, it may be bringing in, I say, you know, if we can't do it, if there's anybody that can do it better than us or cheaper than us, then we go find them and we bring them in. So, um, you know, it, especially <laughs> handy if your kids are worried about you, especially if your kids live elsewhere and they're starting to worry about you, um, then we work a lot of times with, we work kind of for the benefit of adult children who want their parents to do something else so that they don't have to worry. <laughs> so if the problem is they don't want to have to worry, my view is, you know, you shouldn't have to change your life because of that. Um, we can help the, um, the adult children not worry by being able to do things so that they feel comfortable that you're okay. So that's some of the stuff we do at CARES there. Um, for you to be aware of, um, hello, you guys are a market. 
Um, I am a, I'm a boomer myself. I'm at the very, very end. By the time they get to me, I have no kids. By the time, you know, we get to me, everything's going to be over. <laughs> but you're at the beginning, and you get to write the ticket. So whatever you sort of want, um, people are going to create for you. We'll talk about that a little bit more, too. So there's, there's things cropping up that's focusing specifically on seniors. If you want to um, move or downsize, often people, I want to move, but oh, how am I going to? close down this house, what am I going to do with all my stuff, um, how am I going to get the thing sold, there, how am I going to, the move, oh. um, there are companies that specialize in doing that, they, have, they are called senior move managers, they have their own little um, society, they're trained to do it, we've got a couple of them here in town, or in here in the area, they're on your list, so, and they're, they're really good people. Um, we, like at Cares there, we help people find the right living situation. Whether, let's say it's somebody moving to be, Charlottesville to be closer to their kids. Where should I live? There's a bunch of different options, so we help people pick that out. And that's a specific thing kind of for seniors. Um, Builderfish I talked about has a survey. They will come in and help you um, figure out how to make your home work for you. And do you, yes, did you have something for me? or Yes. yes. Okay, and that's one, I'm curious about many things, that's one, so I, I'm gonna like do that myself. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about services that are available to people in Alton Al Al mm -hmm. and uh, Charlottesville. Yes. Uh, do some of these services that you list, do they come out as far as Nelson County? Some of them, I used to live in Nelson County, I used to live in Nellie's Ford. I live over by Wayne County. Okay, all right, very good. Um, there, some of them do, some of them don't. So you call them and say, you come to Nelson, and yeah, enough people call and say, do you come to Nelson? And people are going to start coming to Nelson. Yeah, because there's so many Nelson is another country or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. It felt kind of like another country when I was living out there. Beautiful. Nelson County does have triads, which I'm a member of, and they also, huh. I have not used it, I'm not fortunately, not had to use it, mm -hmm. they also have uh, Nelson County Yes. <laughs> they, they'll make their, they've got a list of people who make daily trips. I mean, daily phone calls to make sure. Wow. But I, don't ha I have information in the house, but I don't have to listen. Okay, and hold that thought because I want to come back to that in a minute because it, it, that's reminding me of some things I think we need to start creating in the community that we're going to have to create. Well, that list sounds like a good idea. I, I'm mm -hmm. not used to it because I'm stubborn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can take care of myself. Yes. Uh, that I, I, but I do feel that something like that would be really cool because if you don't answer the phone, now yep. I told my postal because everything's all delivered postal. Mm -hmm. I, I, I told him I pick my my mail up on Tuesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. and Saturdays. If I don't pick it up and I start piling up, please check. Yep, and that's and something he that. Agreed to, but I hope he doesn't have to do it. Yeah. And, um, neighbors can do that for you too. Like you, well, yes, Nelson. living in Nelson. <laughs> there, that's right. Yeah, you can come come back to bite you. Um, wow. All right, so you're going to have to be creative. There is a company called Care Checkers too, and they will for and it really I can't remember again the price, but it's it's small. I remember it's a reasonable fee. They will call and um, just check in on you, and um, how much either like five days a week it's one price, if you want on the weekends too it's another price. Um, they then if they if you don't um, answer then they call they start going down the list. So that's a, that's a really handy one, and again inexpensive if your kids are like if the only thing their only complaint you're gonna fall. That's a cheap way to get them off your back. So, yeah, calling services and like volunteer ones like that that we could do for each other, even better. Um, I'll get you the resources I know. Yes. They have uh, in Orange, mm -hmm. they have one, and also in Madison, they have an upcoming fall workshop through the mm -hmm. Triad program. Okay.
Okay, sorry, and I should be repeating this so everybody can hear, because I've got the mic. Um, so you're talking about triad programs that are coming up, right? Yeah, they do these community programs, and mm -hmm. this is a little fall, like a fall um, workshop okay. for, the, for the community. Okay, so yeah, a fall, a fall. There, mm -hmm. the other people would have booths there. Okay. But it's like a seminar on falls, and how to use your walker to get one of your scraps. Yes. Yeah, and that's, that's something, right? Using your walker, using your cane. There, there's ways to use it and ways not to use it. Like you don't, if you've got the cane with the four, you know, things, you don't turn it in so they're towards you because you're going to trip over that thing. I mean, you got to know how to work these. Okay, that would be great. So, um, so Scott's saying that he's going to give me all the information about th that triad so I can post it on Seville Seniors. Even though triad doesn't have a... Um, a profile, I can put it under my profile, and you'll see it show up in the blog post, so you can see that stuff happening. Let me just check the time. Okay. Oh. Okay, so, yes, um, so it is 5 after 11. I have a request for a break. I am, like, pretty close to being done. Um, how about I finish, and I would go take your break, because we're all going to be like worrying about you. <laughs> um, and then when we, um, I'm pretty close to finish, we can answer some questions and then um, you guys can talk to these um, folks. Maybe even if we have time, um, we'll ask them to say a few words about what they've got back there so you'll know. So does that work? Do take, anybody who has to take a break, do it. And then I'll just, I'm just kind of almost done. Uh, let's see. So, just kind of giving you ideas about what's available. Uh, Builderfish has their, their home survey. Um, they're a really great resource. Um, if you're confused about insurance, there are people that will help you do that. There are people that sell insurance that will help you do that, who I think are good people and I would trust to do it. There's also a job and insurance um, counseling service that you can go that's free, and you can go you know, ask them what they think about that. Um, in making legal decisions, there are elder law attorneys that special, uh, specialize in elder law. In April, Holly Hilton is going to be doing that presentation with me about, um, you know, kind of taking control of your own legal situation. Um, and there's uh, um, several more that we're affiliated to the Aging in Place Business Roundtable. And I think it may be on the list. Okay, I didn't put the, um, the attorneys on my list, but they are on Seville Seniors. And if you want an attorney, and you call me, and I'll give you all their names. They, and some of them have kind of certain specialties, and they're, they're good people. Um, oh, and if you're a computer person, and you go to www.sevillesseniors.org, and you look at the Aging in Place Business Roundtable profile page, there's a blog post there that has... Um, a presentation that four elder law attorneys gave to our group. It has all of their presentation materials there that you can download, and also you can click on a link and you can listen to their presentation, which is about 30 minutes long. So <clears throat> that kind of gives you an idea who these guys are and what they do. And yes. Can I just add, it occurs to me, um, Todd at Bill and Fish has a weekly newsletter. If you'd like, I'll send one copy to all of you. It's free if you want to sign up. Yeah, it's a, a um, builder fish, and they're they're cute because um, they're one of the partners. His name is Jonathan Fishback, so they're builder fish, and their um, their newsletter is called The Current, which I think is very clever. Um, okay, so just some other services that are available for you. Navigating the healthcare system. I um, am now a believer that you need. Huh, as a matter of fact, I heard a physician. The first time this really clicked for me is when I watched a physician do a presentation and said, "Listen to me." Nobody's in charge of your health care except for you. I had a client that had 12 doctors. None of the doctors knew what the other doctors were doing. We only knew because we went from, with her from doctor to doctor to doctor. And I, you, know, you go into a doctor's office. I don't know if you've ever noticed if you go in the doctor. And they, if they ever say to you, um, so why are we seeing you today? You have to tell them. Now, when we go with our clients, I tell them, um, yes, doctor, the reason we're here today is because you, we, last time we were here that you saw this and you ordered this test and the results of those tests are in, so you were going to make a recommendation about next steps because they don't always know. So, um, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit in the next presentation in, in April about how to do that. But things have kind of changed. These guys have got, what is it, statistically something like seven minutes with you. They're going to come in. When they're walking in the door, they're looking at the chart. Um, my doctor said to me recently, oh, she, and I was so grateful for this. She said to me, oh, my goodness gracious, I'm, I didn't realize you had the XYZ. I don't know why we've been giving you this medication, blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, what do you mean the XYZ? Oh, well, you know the XYZ, blah, blah, blah. I said, really, I have the XYZ? She looked at it, she's like, oh. <laughs> Somebody else's records were in my file. So I was so grateful that she was willing to, to admit a, a, a parent mistake because otherwise they would have been shuffling it under there and they would have been changing me around and rushing me off to the blah, 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 right? So you've really got to be able to watch your own healthcare um, situation or have somebody who's willing to do it. Professional, a friend, somebody like that. So they, anyway, these are the things that, that are available for you. Um, disease or medication management. Home health agencies will do this. Java now has a disease management program, a chronic disease management program, an educational series. It's just starting, I think. It's on Seville Seniors for sure. Um, that will, you know, teach you how to manage your own chronic health care condition. Hmm. I told you about Martha Jeff doing those classes on joint surgery. Um, I told you about the companion agencies that they're, they're available to do, like housekeeping and stuff for you. Um, and, you know, again, it cares there. We, we, we do a little bit of everything. Our job is just to make everything work for you. So those are um, some, you know, things that are available. I talked about, you know, what if there's no money? There's most, I, I'm a believer that most things in the economy, some of them require a technical expertise. Some of, a lot of them don't. It's just somebody who's been willing to take it on. If you're willing to take it on for each other, then you can accomplish a lot of what you would need to pay somebody else to do. So you get together, you decide, you know, how you're going to, hey, I'll, you know, I'll check and see if you picked up the mail and if you haven't, I'll do this. Will you do the same for me? Um, Java has free information or referral service, really, really good. Um, Senior Center, obviously, you've got a lot of resources here. And um, churches and community groups are the best place to get free stuff. Um, and I say, if you're active and you know, you, you got everything going on for yourself right now, <laughs> give to those places. And then it's easier to accept from them when your time comes to accept. <laughs> um, and then we were, you were talking about the, the calling service. I'm a believer that we're, you know, I'm a professional service provider. That's great for some people who it works for them. But the time is coming. There's not going to be enough professional service providers. We're going to have to learn how to do this for ourselves. So um, I think as a community, we're going to start having to look at different kinds of options. Um, the multi-generational home. I mean, what, how did it used to be? Everybody lived in the same house, so grandma was taking care of the kids when mom was, you know, doing what she needed to do. And, you know, maybe we're, we end up going back to something a little bit more like that. We are starting to look in the community about home sharing. You've got this big old house you don't need anymore, but hello, you can't sell it. Well, we live in a university town. There's students that come and live here. Um, one of my friends has got a, um, uh, um, a graduate student coming to live um, during the week in their house so she can finish her graduate program. So we've got more space than we need in certain places and not, um, and not enough spaces we need in other places. Maybe we can cooperate in some of that. Communal living. I've got a friend of mine and we're looking at mm, how can we set up assisted living that isn't so much about money, it's more about trading services. So people can still you know, have what they need even if they don't have the money to pay for it without it having to be the government paying for it. Um, what about s services? Like, Can we do more of bringing a bunch of services um, to one place so that more people can take advantage of it? Um, the, um, the PACE program is a little part of that. The PACE is for Medicaid um, eligible people that will provide a, um, a place where you come for all your medical care, um, but it's only for Medicaid people. But maybe we could do that more for um, for people, you know, other people, where you don't have to go from office to office to office to office. I was with a client in the Laurels, recovering, uh, recovering from hip surgery, who couldn't, hello, walk, because she just got transported via ambulance, and um, she needed blah, blah, blah tests, and they said, okay, we're having Jaunt come to pick her up, blah, 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 and I thought, Jaunt can do it, but, you know, that can they come to her? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So, you know, are there ways that we can have you know, things coming to people rather than people coming to things? Um, time banking. There is a, um, people are doing this to where your kids in D.C. or Seattle or wherever they are volunteer and bank time there. And then somebody else, you know, here provides services for you using that time. So that's a way to have you know, value being exchanged without it having to be necessarily cash. Um, the village concept. Remind me your name. 
Hansi. I know Hansi's interested in this. Um, if you've heard of the Beacon, Vill Beacon Hill Village concept, it is a, to people in Beacon Hill, Boston, wanted to remain in independent in their own homes. They went out and hired an executive director to um, get them access to whatever they needed. I need a taxi. I need a ride to this. I need a plumber. Um, so they started setting up this subscription-based service, kind of like um, My Home for Life, but more grassroots in their own community. And it just exploded. Now there are, I want to say, hundreds all over the world doing this. They've got their own organization that teaches people how to do it. Um, and Hansi and I have been talking about Charlottesville would be a really good place to have what they call a village. So this is something you run yourself, senior center people, perfect. Because you're kind of already doing it a little bit here. It's just getting a little bit more organized to do that yourself and not having to you know, rely on somebody else to do it. Um, oh, I, this is another fantasy of mine, rated by seniors. Um, like what services work for you and don't work for you so that people can see, oh, you know, I liked this one, I didn't like this one. I don't like that restaurant, I do like that restaurant. So that you, know, you can start sharing information. Um, mobile concierges, they like come to you. Hey, you, um, you call up, you know what I need? I need this shopping, I need this prescription picked up, I need this you know, book from the library. Okay, kind of like um, Retail Relay is doing with food. What if you could like place your order and they would just like stop by with whatever you needed? <laughs> and you know, at Cares there, we're just kind of, we're doing a concept not people, very many people know about, which is basically, we work for you, we're our assistant. That's my cue to stop talking. We've got yawning in the front. <laughs> Here's where you can go to find out resources. I've been talking about this. Um, you, you're welcome to call me or email me. I don't sell information, I share information. Jabba, Susan Seidler over there, awesome. She's got great lists. She'll tell you all kind of great things. Um, and these should be on your list. So you, um, you, you can write them down, but you shouldn't have to. Um, Seniors Guide Magazine has a lot of stuff listed. It is an advertising-based um, publication, so I don't think everything's in there, but it's still a good resource. I'm sure it's out there in the lobby. Um, I told you about Seville Seniors. You can go out there to see some of the you know, folks I know who are in what's going on in the community, what they're sharing, who they are. Um, and I told you about the caregivers library, agingyourway.org. Cynthia Hash at Keller Williams Realty does a good job of keeping um, that thing updated so it's, it's comprehensive. I tell you what, we've got 10 minutes left. Why don't I give these guys just a couple minutes to talk about what they've got for you to like, look at, and um, then I'll let you do some exploring. Um, meanwhile, like, it's always a pleasure to be with you. So, and thanks, uh, as always, for, for teaching me some new things. So let me introduce you to Scott Harris from Roberts Home Medical. He's good. He's good. Ah. You hear me? Okay. You hear me now? Good. Great. First of all, I've got Matt's their location. It's really close. Uh, we do have a showroom over there. I brought a couple items for the showroom. Uh, one of our big sellers is a grab bar that you can travel with. And this thing is super tough. If you connect it to one of these wood tables, which is not supposed to work on wood, and I'll be glad to demonstrate that. You can imagine what it would do for a tub if you're in a hotel. A lot of hotels aren't uh, handicapped accessible. So, brought some things for a cane or walker. If you had to use one, there is a flashlight now you can hook onto your cane. There's little gadgets you can put on there to make it accessible. Our whole selling point is to get you to use something that's going to give you a peace of mind to use it. Also, I know a lot of travelers in here, uh, you have a folding cane that fits easily into your suitcase. Makes it very nice to go through the airport, very safe. You can have the straps, a lot of things you wouldn't think we would have over there. It's the straps that go on a cane so you can put it around your wrist if you're eating dinner or riding a bus. We also have the pill boxes that Elizabeth was referring to in all different styles. There's a little rack up there with all kinds of different things. It's more convenient for you to go across the street versus a big pharmacy. We'd be glad to do that. We have pill splitters. We have little containers that you can put your pills in and hook on your keychain. This is one I like. This is a shampoo cap. A lot of people that are injured or handicapped and they're going through a rough time that they don't want to be going through, they can't wash the hair. It drives women crazy. I used to have that problem, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a dry powder that you massage in your hair, does all the work for you. If anybody's ever had that problem and they had to use one of the teardrop trays, water gets everywhere, so this is a really good product for us. We have the New Balance bracelets in. These are uh, a big seller. If you believe in these things, they sell like crazy. It's supposed to be balanced. He does what? 
It's a balance bracelet. So the idea is the, uh, it's kind of like that. They had this several years ago when I worked in a pharmacy about it was supposed to help your pain with the magnets. But, but it says uh, these minerals are charged. It supposedly has minerals in it. And uh, just come on over, I'll tell you about it. I've got to learn some more about that myself. We have pedometers that are very easy to use just for the active lifestyle. And uh, a couple resources I, I welcome you to come and take is this is a at home guidebook. This is kind of called, I call this the Sears Catalog of Home Medical Equipment. It has all of our products in it. We hope you don't need our products, but hopefully we'll take good care of you if you do. We have maps to our location to have a 10% discount on some of the ice items on it for cash and carry items. And brochures. Uh, we specialize in home oxygen and we always have an a oxygen system that fits your lifestyle. Everybody has a different lifestyle. So please come over and see me. I'd be glad, glad to talk to you. One of the things we're talking about today or featuring today is a telephone that is a caption call telephone. This is a really nice setup if you have issues on the telephone, if you're having a little bit of trouble hearing. Uh, party that is calling you, whatever they're saying, is actually printed across the screen as they talk to you. So you get to hear it like you would with a normal telephone, and you get to read it too. There's typically like a second delay, second and a half delay for this to come across. Really nice way to communicate if you're having trouble on the telephone. The nice part about these is if you go online, I think they're listed for about $125. There is a grant out now if we apply through the, uh, through the internet. We can get these and they do not cost you anything. The phone doesn't cost anything. You use your regular telephone service, so there's no additional charges there. There are no monthly fees on it at your phone. The only thing you do need to have is access to high-speed internet either on the ethernet or they can look it up wirelessly. So anyway, uh, I've got some brochures on that. I've got a way to sign up for it. I'd love for you all to come by and talk about that. Also, I would encourage everyone, if you're not getting uh, an annual hearing test from your doctor, which typically 13% of the doctors in America will request or, or pay any attention to your hearing, uh, which is sad, but it is true. So. If you're not getting a hearing test annually, please come by and get one. 